Hey everybody, Super Syrupy Waffles here, and today I'm feeling different. So different, in fact, that I feel like I should make a brand new video series all about video games. You know, you know, I probably should do that since I'm, you know, feeling different. So just get to the video. So what better way to start a new series than with a topic that has been done to death on YouTube for about a thousand times? You guessed it, a top five list. Congratulations. And this top list in particular is something that is quite personal to me. My top five favorite video games. Yes, the five games that I have looked fondly upon for years now. And games that I just adore to my heart's content. But let's just say some of the choices for them are not what you would expect to be. So without further ado, let's get to number five. <laughs> Mario is such a great game series, until it isn't. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like Nintendo gets up every morning and says, Should we make a Mario game that stinks or is great? And in 1988, Nintendo made Super Mario Bros. 3, the third in the original trilogy of the series. Super Mario Bros. 3 is easily one of the greatest 2D platformers I have ever played, and debated to be one of the hardest Mario platformers. But I actually never thought it was hard. If anything, I thought Super Mario World was harder. And although that statement is objectively incorrect, I still think Super Mario Bros. 3 is a phenomenal game. Its level design is top-notch, giving you a fair challenge from time to time, while still giving you a fun experience. From the power-ups, the enemies, the secret stuff, this game just shows its greatness in spades. Even the music is great! You can even be a frog! That's something it's Mr. Pants can't do. I really have nothing more to give to this game other than praise. They absolutely nailed it for this game. I wish I had more to say, but... Come on. It's Mario. Mega Man! Yeah! Jumping and shooting and sliding and charging! Well, I hope you didn't care for those last two things, because we're talking about Mega Man 9! Mega Man 9 is easily one of the better entries of the classic series, grouped up with games like 4, 6, and 2. Hi guys! Although this game reverted back to how the first two games played, they really nailed how it should work. Just like the last entry on the list, this game has extremely good platforming. Except this time you get to shoot robots. And who doesn't love shooting robots? The story for this game is about as generic as the rest of the classic series. Dr. Light gets framed as the cause of multiple robot riots across the world by Dr. Wily. And somehow society believes this man. Same man who tried taking over the world nine times. You know, maybe this is why our society is replacing humans with robots. Because all of us are dumb enough to believe that this geriatric who wiggles his eyebrows constantly is the right one in this situation. Mega Man decides to clear Dr. Light's name and find out what's really going on at Wily's house. This leads to quite possibly the most solid Robot Master lineup in the series, while also introducing the first and only female Robot Master in existence. And I bet you could guess what the internet did with her. But other than that, man, these levels are awesome! They all have really fun and original mechanics that really challenge you sometimes. My personal favorites are the swinging platforms and Jewel Man stage, and these weird party horn looking things in Hornet Man stage. I guess that's why he's called Hornet Man, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Just like the rest of the series, you gain the abilities from bosses after beating them. But this game has quite possibly the best boss weapon selection out of the entire Mega Man series by a long shot. All of these are pretty useful in some way. No more are some weapons simply relegated to just being boss killers. But as we all know, this is a Mega Man game, so prepare to die a lot. I give this game 9 Hornet Man party horns out of 10. <laughs> Super Paper Mario is considered to be the black sheep of the Paper Mario series, which is understandable since it's the most unique of them all. Instead of having a turn-based battle format, Super Paper Mario goes for more platforming-focused gameplay. But never fear, RPG fans, because there are several RPG elements spread throughout. Although most of them are totally pointless, it's still neat that they're here nonetheless. And man, the story here is top-notch stuff. I don't want to spoil much of it, but the whole gist of it is that this Count Black guy wants to destroy the universe with this black hole thingy that watches over you throughout the game. You know, it reminds me a lot of the moon from Majora's Mask, except here, you can take as much time as you want. From a story standpoint, you do actually have a time limit, but in this game, 
you can break the laws of the story. Because who cares? Now, in the game, you can play as Bowser, the pesky plumbers, that the princess. Except you should probably not play as Bowser. He kind of breaks the combat in half after you level him up. Another cool mechanic are the pixels. Pixels basically act as extra moves for your characters. Like one of the Max has a floating platform, one is a bomb, and one can throw things. There are also a lot of them to find. Another reason why I like this game is because it is one of the first games I've ever played. Sure, I was frustrated and confused by it because I couldn't read, but it was still very fun nonetheless. I'm real happy I played this game when I was younger. And even though I've never been good at fighting games, I still enjoy playing them. I've played a fair share of Smash Bros and Street Fighter, but I've also played the first two Guilty Gear games at my cousin's house one time. And if you're watching this, you know who you are, and you're awesome. There's one fighting game that I've played the most, however, and that game is Skullgirls. I absolutely love Skullgirls. The art style, the characters, the crazy combos that people could pull off, all of it is extremely good for fighting game standards. Now, although I'm pretty garbage at this game, I still think it's pretty fun. My personal favorite characters are Peacock and Annie, and I wreck CPUs pretty well with them. I barely even try online because anytime I do, I, I, I lose. But, but it, 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 sometimes I win and it's pretty satisfying. Speaking of Annie, she's part of the Season 1 Pass, which is basically the new DLC stuff. It includes the normal kind of stuff for fighting games like palettes, new characters, stages, and not a free copy of Superhero Squad for Wii, that's for sure. I love this game so much that when I go to gaming conventions, whenever there's a Skullgirls cabinet, I'd be more than willing to play it. See, look, here's a picture. Yep, that's me. You know, you could just move on to the next one, who cares about that? When people ask me, what's my favorite video game ever made? I used to not have a straight answer. That was until 2019, where I finally played Shantae Half-Genie Hero. As most people don't know, I'm a really big Shantae fan. Every game in the series, except Risky's Revenge, is an absolute blast to play. When I think of Metroidvanias, I think of the Shantae games in Hollow Knight. Except, the word Metroidvania just doesn't apply to this game! Yay! Yep, that's right. This game goes for a more linear approach. However, there's still a lot of exploration you could do in the levels. There's just a ton of things to find in this game. And most of the stuff you can find is pretty useful. Except the potions you can buy. These are kind of useless considering the fact that food items can be found from random drops all throughout the levels. And as you get more items and upgrades for them, you can have the potential to be literally invincible in the game, which is really nuts. Another cool thing about this game are the characters, and there sure are a lot of them. So, uh, let me look at my list here, uh, uh, let's see, uh, oh, yeah, here we go. A little bit of Shantae in my life, a little bit of Baron's by my side, a little bit of Roddy's what I need. A little bit of mermaid to what I see A little bit of cat guards with the guns A little bit of giants with big boots A little bit of risky boots, here I am A little bit of random zombie men These characters here are all rock solid. All of them are very cleverly written, and even Roddy Tops is good. I hate Roddy Tops, but not in this game, and I hear the mob outside my house already. Unlike the rest of the Shantae games, there are a lot of extra modes to play, locked behind DLC or given to you for free if you buy the Ultimate Edition of the game. And there is so much to do! Check out all these modes! This is quite possibly the most lengthy game in the franchise by far. Because all of these are practically separate campaigns, I'll go through a quick review of them all. So let's start with the costume modes, and I'm gonna be completely blunt. The costume modes are pretty mediocre. Never thought any of them were too special or something that I'd go. Did you see level 4 of the ninja? There's even a Mighty Switch Force costume mode, which is probably the closest thing we'll ever get to a new Mighty Switch Force game anytime soon. This mode is pretty cool. Each mode can die in a hole for all I care, this one stinks. Friends to the End is a more puzzle-based platforming campaign focused on the weird story split at the tail end of the story that just kinda happens and ends in the matter of a minute. In this, you take control of Shantae's three friends, Bolo, Sky, and Roddy Tops. Bolo uses hooks, Sky uses her bird, and Roddy Tops is a broken mess. It's much tougher than the costume modes for sure, but it still is pretty fair and fun. But then we get to the best mode of the game, Pirate Queen's Quest. Wow. 
If you like the pirate weapons from the last game, then make your bodies ready for the slightly nerfed versions of them. And wow, Risky Boots controls extremely well with these abilities, making this mode the most movement heavy. And the hub world is definitely something you don't want your mom seeing you play. And then there's Hardcore Mode. This one is exactly how it sounds. If you thought the original game was for little babies, then this one is for you. So that's Shantae Half Genie Hero. And boy, what a game it was. But it isn't as good as the real number one entry, Monkey Mischief Party Time! <laughs>